Welcome to the RD2B podcast. Each week we sit down with a different registered dietitian nutritionist to showcase the diversity of opportunity in the dietetics profession. Our aim is to dismantle the notion that there is a traditional career path. I'm Carl Barnes, the registered dietitian behind the scenes of RD2B. And I am Jenna Warnock, the RD2B host. Our RD guests share their stories, career paths, and advice to help students like us succeed in the profession. Welcome back to another week of the RD2B podcast. We're super excited to sit down and feature yet another dietetic internship program. And so uh, we are super excited to meet, uh, feature Miss Roxanne Kingston. She's the Aramark Distance Dietetic Internship Regional Manager. And we're just super excited to learn about your program. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, for sure. And so just to kind of set the stage with your current position in Aramark, can you describe how you got your role as regional manager? Sure. Um, I have been in dietetics education about 13 years. Um, uh, When I first uh, started working, I I worked as a consultant, mostly in long-term care for about five years. After that, I got into dietetics education. Uh, For about 12 years, I worked uh, at a university and I ran a dietetic internship and I also taught in a graduate program. And uh, the opportunity came along for me to take a position with Airmark as a regional manager and I jumped right on it, and it's been wonderful. Yeah, awesome, and I think it's great how you have that really strong foundation working with dietetic internships and in the educational setting, just already going into your position, and I think that that's, you know, just a great benefit to have for prospective interns with having a good person to look up to as that manager or, you know, dietetic internship program, and so getting into the nitty-gritty technical aspects of your program, about how many Uh, students apply in the fall or in the spring versus how many do you accept in each match? Because uh, as we discussed previous to recording, you guys participate in both. Right. So our biggest match cycle is spring. We usually have about 100, sometimes 125. It kind of varies apps. And I will say that we usually place about 45 um, in facilities uh, and and match with, with about that many. Fall match, we just, this was our first fall match cycle in many, many years. Uh, And so we actually uh, took 13 interns this time, but with both match cycles, we can take up to 60. So that's how many slots we have between the two. Awesome. And if you don't mind me asking, was there a particular reason why you reopened up fall match? We saw it as an opportunity, Uh, especially this fall. We knew that there would be students that wanted to um, come in and uh, get done before 2024, before the master's mandate. Uh, And also we see it as an opportunity moving forward for people that just, you know, it's always been kind of a weird thing to to graduate uh, at different times, like summer and then in December as well. And so either those people for a long time had to just wait until kind of August to start their internships, or uh, they were able to go through a fall match cycle and start internships, you know, right in the new year around January. Um, And so there aren't tons of programs that go through fall match. And uh, we saw it as an opportunity. We'd love to fill that void. Mm -hmm, Yeah. And it's really great just opening up, you know, the more opportunity for different interns at well, prospective interns at different points in their educational career. It's a really great way to just open up more opportunities for more people to get that RD credential, which is great. And one thing too about uh, the admissions process is uh, you have the regular admissions, then you also have pre-select as well. So can you describe the difference between those two types of admissions? Yeah, absolutely. So we have different sets of dates and pre-select happens a good amount of time before a computer match. Uh, It usually happens around January for spring match and the deadline's February 15th. It usually happens um, around September or so for fall match. So the only difference is that if you're an employee for Aramark, or if you are if you are getting your graduate education through one of our partner universities, right now it's the University of Alabama and Texas Tech. Um, that could change in the near future. But uh, those three ways, the University of Alabama, Texas Tech, be enrolled in their graduate program um, are one of their programs that we're affiliated with that that we are allowed to go through the pre-select process. And then if you're an if you are an employee of Aramark, uh, you also can go to the through the pre-select process. Other than that, everything else is the same. I will tell you though, the benefit of pre-select is that you get to go to the location that you want. Um, A lot of those pre-select applicants get their first pick on locations. Uh, We have a lot of really hot locations um, in Texas, um, in Pennsylvania, um, 
all over the country, but there's some states where those spots go really fast and going through the pre-select process, you're really guaranteed to, um, to have a good chance at getting one of those spots. Oh yeah. And that's great. And so you did mention the timeline for the spring match. And so in kind of going towards the partnerships that you have with the University of Alabama and Texas Tech, say that a student's in that situation where they're applying for the fall match, are they still able to start at those graduate programs in the spring whenever they start the internship? Yes, absolutely. Um, they are very flexible. Uh, the, both of those degrees are 30 credit hour degrees. So that is the minimum uh, hours for a graduate degree. So you're looking at about 10-ish classes. Um, most of them have a just a special project for the end instead of writing a thesis or something uh, more complicated. Uh, and the, the classes when they're offered are flexible, which that's most important to everybody. So you don't necessarily have to um, take certain classes each semester. Uh, there aren't a lot of kind of sequenced classes so that you can kind of start in the program uh, when when you're ready. And, you know, since interns are going to need their graduate degree, uh, we want them to be moving along in that graduate program. We want it to be accessible and we want them to be able to have classes to take as they move through. Yeah, definitely. And so with the structure of having that graduate degree component into your um, dietetic internship, can you do, you did mention its flexibility, but can you kind of describe the outline of coursework and how it incorporates with the actual rotations? Yeah, so we have tried really hard to remove any duplications and um, supervised practice experiences and things that we include in our internship. For a long time, uh, internships were uh, I think doing a lot of kind of double work. Uh, they were having students do these projects with graduate degrees. They were doing some of the same things in their facilities. So we have really slimmed everything down in our internship to make sure that uh, we only have those supervised practice experiences. So it wouldn't be kind of those graduate components. In our big projects, if we have any big projects that can be, that are similar to the graduate projects that are offered, we will accept those um, in the internship. Uh, different clinical projects, um, productivity projects, we will accept those um, so that they're not having to do things double. But again, there isn't a ton of crossover between the work because we've kind of skimmed everything down so that there is no duplication. Because working with multiple graduate programs, you can't be assured that all have the same exact curriculum. They're all slightly different. Um, so we just make sure to include kind of the minimum um, that ASCEND wants us to include and uh, then let the graduate schools take that graduate component that takes, you know, written aspects of things and kind of brings that to another level and also research components. Mm -hmm, yeah, for sure. And uh, getting more so into the technical aspects of the graduate degree component, um, would students be doing all the classes online and would they be enrolled full time in the graduate program in case they need financial aid? That's a really good question, Jenna. Um, they would, these are fully online programs. Um, those are the only programs because we're a distance program. Face-to-face um, -face probably wouldn't work as well. And, and you're seeing most things move to fully online. Now that's the way that the curriculums are going. Um, to be considered uh, full-time in a graduate program, usually that's about nine hours. Sometimes they will let you um, enroll in six or seven. So taking any more than about six hours a semester is going to be a little bit difficult when you're in supervised practice. So about two classes a semester. Have I seen people take three? Yes, I have. Some some people can handle it. But yes, financial aid is, is provided um, when the students are enrolled in those graduate programs, for sure. Awesome. And so kind of tailoring more towards to, you know, um, the support aspect financially and, you know, how what you said, the flexibility of moving to a lot of things online. A really unique thing about, yes, your program is distance, is that you help secure the sites for the students, regardless of where they are in the United States, which I think is a really strong thing to outline with a distance internship, with having that connection to interns with finding their sites. And so can you describe the process for determining sites for your interns? Yeah, absolutely. I do think that is a unique aspect of our program. So I'm glad that you uh, bring it up all across the United States. Airmark has accounts with different clinical and management um, student nutrition facilities. So we we spend months and months prior to uh, 
taking students in, you know, getting new contracts and vetting these facilities, making sure they have enough staff, making sure they have everything that they need, that they're trained, that, that everything's appropriate to actually take in an intern. Um, you know, when we get new accounts, we don't necessarily automatically put interns there. We want to make sure everything's set up nicely for the interns to be able to go in. But yeah, we are making plans now for interns that will go in facilities a year from now. And what can change in a year? A lot of stuff. You know, things can happen. Uh, you you gain accounts, you lose accounts. So we're constantly managing sites and managing facilities um, is a about as much work as it takes to manage a set of interns. Um, it's, it's a constant um, trying to make sure that, as you know, there's challenges with in healthcare with um, staffing shortages, um, which it makes it even more important for us to train dietitians and to kind of put them out into the workforce so that, that we can, uh, you know, bridge that gap in those staffing shortages. Yeah, definitely. And kind of just making sure that the hospital setting or wherever they're going is competent for the intern to fulfill those competencies required by Ascend. And so whenever it comes to picking those sites and uh, assigning students to those sites, uh, of course, you know, they have to be accepted into your program before you go through any of the site picking for your interns. But once they are accepted, what is the timeline between, oh, hey, you're matched, yay, to, okay, communicating with you guys about the sites and then getting their sites secured and figured out? Yeah. So when they apply, they apply to actual locations um, so that they're matched with the location they want. So they might um, they might get matched with Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's where our corporate headquarters is and a very popular place for our, our internship sites. Um, or they might get matched with Dallas, Texas or Houston, Texas. And so, you know, Houston's a big area. That could mean a lot of different things. So really what we do is, in, for example, I'm going to use Houston as an example. We have a lot of different facilities there, um, about 10 facilities um, that we work with. So we try to, after match, See who all matched with the Houston area. Okay, how many how many interns do we have? And then we look at our facilities. There are certain specifics about the, these facilities. Some are high acuity. Some are you know in a more rural area of Houston. Um, some have um, different characteristics about them that might match the skill set and the personality of, of the interns um, that were accepted into our program. So we try to get to know the interns just a little bit. Try to see where they would fit the best and what facility might um, kind of meet their needs the best. Another thing that we also do is we look at um, their home address. Some, for some of them, uh, they're moving anyway, so it doesn't really matter to them. For some of them, that's the area they're going to live. So we take into account their permanent residence. So, you know, where do they live? And we're trying not to go over, you know, about 45 minutes or so from their kind of home, home base. Uh, so we take into account all of those things, kind of um, logistically, and then, um, you know, analyze that and, and look at the, the full picture and kind of where they would fit best. So if they are matched in April, you know, immediately your location, because you've matched to those, that location, your hospital, you usually find out about a month later or so. So it's pretty quickly. And then um, they start in facilities and I'm going off a of spring match because we've just done our first fall match. Spring is the one I know off the top of my head. Um, they go into their facilities about mid-August. So they have about mm, 10 to 12 weeks lead time before starting in their facilities uh, because sometimes it takes all of that lead time to get onboarded to some of the hospital facilities. Yeah, definitely. And so you did mention how the structural framework for kind of uh, assigning interns based off of your more popular areas. And so say, and I'm sure that you've had this happen to you in the past, where an intern is like, you know, they're in this tiny little town that you haven't had any other intern go to before. And so just kind of like if a listener is listening to this and they're like, oh, I have to be in Houston or, oh, I have to be in Pennsylvania to be able to get a site with our Aramark. Um, what's the process or how did you handle those past experiences with those interns in those very specific niche locations? Yeah. You know, unfortunately, you know, in somewhere like Houston, we have you know, say we have 10 slots and we have 20 people that want that area. The the people that um, score, we do things very fairly and we rank by points. So we score their applications, we score their interview and then um, kind of place them into the system based based on points. Um, so if, if they happen to match with um, that area, then they get that area. Now, if you were lower down on the points and you might not have as much of an opportunity, but 
back to your point that some of those smaller locations, sometimes we say, oh, I hope somebody picks, you know, this, this certain location in Georgia, because it's an amazing location. We love sending interns there, but it might be a smaller location that people don't often pick. So what I would say to those who maybe are listening to this is, um, you know, expand your options. The internship is not for that long. I mean, we're talking about eight months. So um, something that somebody told me back when I was going through my internship is you can do anything for that amount of time. And that is the truth. You know, it's just a small kind of um, sliver of your life that, and you can do anything for that amount of time. If it means moving, I actually, during my internship, rented a room from somebody and had to kind of move off for a short amount of time. And, you know, by the time I blinked, it was over and I was back home. So look into those smaller locations, expand your options. Um, When you're ranking areas, you know, choose five or so areas so that you have more of an opportunity of getting matched. Yeah, and I think it's really good how you highlighted, yeah, even if you're worried because you're coming from those less popular areas, they're, everyone usually gravitates toward those bigger areas. So sometimes you're trying to fill spots in those smaller areas. And it's really good that you just highlighted, hey, broaden your horizons and see where opportunities can take you. Because yeah, even though it is a short period of time, it's still a super impactful period of time. And if it's just, you know, broadening your horizons by, you know, a couple mile radius or things like that, it can really open up doors with your program, which is great. And specifically going into what your program focuses on with the intern, like with the internship and not a concentration because you don't need concentrations or things like that. But we did discuss how your program does prioritize the clinical aspect of dietetics. And it specifically makes up 17 weeks of all of the rotations, which is a pretty hefty chunk. And so with that big clinical emphasis, can you explain why you guys focused on the clinical setting? Yeah, well, there, there's a lot of competencies to, to meet in that setting. Um, and also there's a big chunk of the RD exam now that focuses um, on clinical, clinical more so than it, than it used to be. Uh, it, during that kind of 17 weeks of clinical, they're, they're inpatient, they're outpatient, they're lower acuity, they're higher acuity, they're critical care, ICU. So they're doing kind of the gamut of stuff. Uh, they are even being able to be, in, be involved in community type things in that clinical setting. It might be some kind of class that they have to plan that's offered in that setting or some type of employee event that's offered in that setting. So it is a variety of clinical experiences, but yes, it is a it is a big chunk and we have found it to be very beneficial and you know, of the utmost importance is passing the RD exam and our pass rate rate is has really done well the past couple of years. And um, I think it's the curriculum and the way that things are set up. Yeah. And I think it's great how you highlighted, yes, while we have 17 weeks of clinical, you're not sitting at a desk in a hospital for 17 weeks. Like it's, you're getting that, you know, robust experience of everything that pertains to clinical and um, that, yeah, your biggest priority is making sure that you are an RD by the end of it. And so it's really good how you guys kind of focus on, you know, getting that well-rounded experience, but then also keeping that end goal in sight because, you know, you put your interns first and it's really good how that shows with your pass rates as well. And so um, going more towards, you know, getting that RD credential, they make it to the finish line and things like that. After these interns have graduated from your program, where have you seen the majority of them end up or like, you know, where their careers kind of lead them? Yeah, uh, all over. Um, I, you know, we've seen them do all kinds of things, go in, immediately into management positions or uh, clinical nutrition management, uh, retail management, all kinds of different things. Um, ultimately, we'd love for them to stay with Aramark. Uh, you know, that's really our main goal. And that's the reason that we have an internship program to train these, these interns into wonderful professionals. And uh, we want those wonderful professionals to then come work for us. That's uh, one of the most important uh, things to us. Now, sometimes location, you know, can, can have an effect on that. You know, we, we are hiring in, in a location that maybe you don't want to go to. So that kind of, um, you know, takes away kind of the plans that you had. So, I mean, we see them starting in clinical, starting in community service type positions, um, starting in food service, school nutrition, all, all different aspects going into sports nutrition. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's really good how you highlighted, you know, you also want to get these new young professionals into your um, company as well, just because 
you're training them directly. And honestly, you can see that dietetic internship application process as that first round of job interviewing, because it's like what gets your foot in that door for maybe starting your career with you guys, which I think is a really like good way to forward think if anyone is considering dietetic internships to apply to is the ones that also want to invest in you as a potential, you know, future professional once you are in RD. So it's a really great thing that you highlighted as well. And so I'm sure that's one thing that it, uh, interns probably like is the potential job prospects within your program. But are there any other common things that students enjoy about your program? Um, so our program is we try really hard to build a sense of community. I, I, I think in some internship students feel really siloed. One thing I haven't mentioned up until this point is we have 17 class days. They're virtual class days. Um, they're they're uh, modules that are mostly self-directed, but they have several activities where we'll have them team up or we might do a lecture, get on with them and do a lecture. But those experiences um, help to kind of bring the class together as a community. Uh, another thing that we have is a monthly meetup. So we actually have our uh, next one tomorrow night where we're going to have some, two eating disorder specialists come and talk to the group. And during those monthly meetups, of course, they always have the, the opportunity to ask questions or get a clarification on anything they're doing. But we always try to provide them with something extra, something that they might not have exposure to in their supervised practice. Eating disorders typically is a pretty advanced area of dietetics, and not all interns get to experience that. So having those specialists come to talk to them to answer their questions about potential careers, um, I think, is a really important thing. So they enjoy the sense of community. They enjoy um, getting to know each other, having those little extras. And lastly, I think they really enjoy that kind of corporate aspect of our internship. It's not something that you always get to experience um, in uh, other types of internships, that kind of management company, the programs that are created, the different policies that are that are created and that are utilized kind of across the country for Aramark, the initiatives that they have. That's a really cool thing to do to see and to experience in the eight months that you're with us. Um, and I think that really sets us apart as well. Yeah, and I also saw on your website, you guys have been doing this since 1991. And so that's like you have decades under your belt of providing, you know, education and supervised practice sites for these interns. And so, yeah, like it definitely shows where it's like you have years of investing into these interns and we're just each year you know, you have these new interns that come in and they have such a strong foundation with Aramark of, you know, all the things that they've learned and like what you've learned with teaching interns and stuff and just building off of it. And it's really great how you have built a community for the interns and within Aramark across the country. And I think that's great. And so uh, in, for you personally, like finding, figuring out what your favorite part of the program is, or in case it maybe parallels with what interns like, but yeah, I'm just curious to know what you particularly like about the dietetic internship. Um, well, what I like most about my job is mentoring these interns. That's why I kind of do it each uh, day. I, I tell them all the time, um, and this is a kind of a true teacher's heart, but they, their successes bring me joy. It truly does. Um, it, it fills me up. Um, as far as our internship, what I enjoy the most is um, all the different networking. I mean, once you're connected with this internship, you literally have access to people across the country. Um, you will have never even met this person that you emailed in New York or were on a conference call with. And the interns have exposure to this as well. And then all of a sudden you have this contact who knows this person who can get you access to this. And it's just a really wonderful thing, you know, with the trainings and um, all the different we have a lot of really bright people working for this company um, doing some really great th things. And so that's really fun for me to experience and for all the interns to experience. Mm -hmm, yeah, because it's like not only are the interns benefiting from you, you're benefiting from every intern that you see walk through the program. And it's really great having that mutual benefit. And also allows say that like someone's listening to this and they want to apply to your program and they get into your program it's having an understanding of it's okay to ask questions it's okay to reach out and it's okay to treat it like that mutual line of you're not just here to go through the motions you're here to create conversations and you know to like maintain that long communication that leads to that awesome networking because also the dietetics realm from what I've learned is just it's a very small world and so like with what you said you never know who's going to be 
your next employer or who's going to be your next coworker. So it's really great how Aramark like provides that for its interns. And so our last question just kind of gears more towards to like just overarching advice regarding supervised practices and dietetic internships. And so say that someone listening to this is just really interested in applying to your program for the next match, or they're just getting ready to apply for programs in general. So like what advice would you give to those students planning to apply for supervised practices in the future? I guess I would say um, do your best to, to uh, be well-rounded. Uh, you know, things are different than they used to be. P students have to work, students, and, and yet fit in all of these things. It's so much harder than it used to be. The volunteer, the, the working full-time, uh, the, the clubs, and all the things that you need to be involved in. So it's just do the best that you can to be well-rounded in the capacity that you have. Um, give your best. That's, that's really all that you can do. Um, be open-minded, um, and really don't stress and worry about the things that you can't control. Um, I, I think that I worried from the time I was a freshman in college until I finished my internship. And it's like, man, that's a really long time to worry about this. You know, just it, it's coming, prepare, take it for what it is. And, um, you know, it'll be here before you know it. It'll be over before you know it. And I'm a big believer in, in education. Um, been in school a long time. I'm working on my PhD and still have a little, little ways to go. So, but one thing that, that somebody, people can never take away from you is your education. So it is the gift that keeps on giving that will last a lifetime. That is excellent words to leave off of, Ms. Roxanne. Thank you so much for talking about Aramark's awesome dietetic internship and the great opportunities that you give to your interns. And I know listeners will get a lot from this episode. So thank you again. Thanks, Jenna.